A new high-speed rail linking China's southern Yunnan province to the capital of Laos promises to boost trade and tourism between the countries. It's part of Beijing's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, which have seen railways, seaports and other infrastructure projects built across Asia, Africa and the Pacific. But as in other parts of the world, some experts have warned that the Chinese-built railway could pile on debt for impoverished Laos. Lo Min Min reports. After being sealed for over a month due to COVID-19, the Mohan border between China and Laos is open for trade again. But additional safety measures like swab tests on imported produce and special permits for traders are keeping traffic at the customs slow. This Chinese fresh fruit exporter has been in the business for two decades, but she's now selling only a tenth of the volume she used to trade before the pandemic. This new rail line, however, promises to change that. It opened to great fanfare in December, with President Xi Jinping witnessing the opening via video link. This train is running at 160 kilometers per hour, and after five years in construction, this 1,000 kilometers long rail line is capable of whisking people and goods from China to Laos in less than a day. It cuts travel time from the border to Vientiane, the capital of Laos, from two days to just three hours. It also cuts freight costs by some 30 percent. It's part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, the first node in an ambitious plan for a railway linking China to Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. No, I think this is a win-win for both uh, China and Laos. I mean, a I mean, large chunk of it was majority of that is investment coming from China. So. So this is really uh, uh, China's uh, goodwill, I think, to the, to the neighboring countries. Chinese state-owned enterprises hold a 70% stake in the project, while a Laos state-owned company holds 30%. As a landlocked country, it has to depend on, uh, you know, uh, basically nearby ports uh, in uh, Bangkok, uh, as well as uh, uh, China uh, or even Vietnam. Uh, for help to export its goods overseas. The uh, railway has enabled uh, Laos uh, to uh, venture out of its landlocked uh, position. However, Laos already ranks among poor countries deemed to be at high debt risk. And the railway is setting the country back by a further $1.5 billion in debt owed to China. Laos owes quite a lot of money to the Chinese government already, and uh, as a consequence of the railway, they're going to owe even more. I think current debt, excluding the railway, is approximately two-thirds of uh, Laos' um, gross domestic product, which is about $20 billion nominal. Servicing that debt will be a challenge and could tip the power balance further in China's favor. In 2020, Laos was reported to have ceded majority control of its electric grid to a Chinese company due to debt obligations. It remains to be seen whether this uh, debt trap uh, you know, issue is going to uh, fester or if uh, the uh, parties concerned who are stakeholders to the railway line in Laos, whether there can be a sort of a compromise or uh, another arrangement that can uh, sort of uh, mitigate uh, the issue of a uh, debt trap. In 2019, Beijing had forgiven debts owed by Ethiopia and Cameroon, and it's also started offering lower cost loans for some poor countries. But there is competition on the horizon. The European Union has launched a $340 billion global gateway fund to boost global infrastructure. A project which analysts say is aimed at countering China's Belt and Road Initiative and curbing Beijing's growing economic and political influence. Lo Min Min, CNA, Yunnan.